So it's Tuesday, we always have to talk about some form of health. So according to reports, worldwide 290 million people are living with viral hepatitis unaware. Without finding the, um, um, the undiagnosed and linking them to care, millions will continue to suffer and lives will be lost. In commemorating World Hepatitis Day, which is today, we have a pharmacist and head vaccine sales and strategy, Emzo Vaccines, Dr. Chuku Ekui. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Dr. Ekui. you this morning. Good to have you on the show. So tell us a bit about hepatitis. For those who have no idea what it is, um, when we hear hepatitis, we think of the liver, but we're not sure. Could you just tell us exactly what it is? Okay, in a layman's language, uh, hepatitis simply means um, inflammation of the liver. And um, that inflammation could be due to so many reasons. It could be due to uh, excessive alcohol intake. It could be due to drugs. But most especially, it could be due to a viral agent. So any inflammation of the liver is what we refer to hepatitis. It's just hepa has to do with hepatitis, has to be with inflammation. So that's what it simply means. Okay, according to what we know, um, it's, hepatitis is likely largely like the HIV virus. How many, which of the um, strains, is it the A, B, C, or D? Which one is terminal? Which one is curable? Which one is without drug cure? Okay, like you just, uh, pointed out, we, we have uh, different types of uh, viral agents that uh, cause hepatitis. We have the A, B, C, D, E, and of late there is EG, but there's little information on that. Now, if you come to these uh, various uh, uh, agents, A and E are um, the ones that uh, are not so chronic in nature. When I mean chronic, it doesn't stay in the liver for a long time. And um, but if you come to the most important one, the most important one is hepatitis B, which uh, from the WHO side, over 2 billion people are infected with hepatitis B. And over 1 point, uh, 350 million people rather are infected with hepatitis C. Now hepatitis B, C, and D actually are the ones that are most important. And uh, the B is the one that leads to chronic um, liver disease, C also leads to chronic liver disease, and D also leads to chronic liver disease. Can you get hepatitis B if you don't drink? Oh, sure, you can, you can, because um, apart from drinking, which is just a part of it is caused by excessive consumption of alcohol, hepatitis B actually is caused by the virus, hepatitis B virus and it can be picked up from body fluids or from blood. So just like the uh, AIDS virus that um, uh, people can pick due to sex or use of um, um, blood products or, or instruments that can pierce the body, all these things are what actually could uh, cause one to pick up hepatitis B virus. So let's talk about other forms of spreading the hepatitis virus. What are the other methods of uh, spreading? Okay, a apart from the, the sexual means of spreading uh, and blood, also a child can pick it from the mother. That we call the mother to child uh, transmission. And when people also share an, a, a sharp instruments like needles, they can also pick it. So anything that has to do with blood or body fluid, once somebody positive of hepatitis B uh, has an, a contact with the next person, either through blood fluid or body fluid or sharp needle or any sharp object, the person can actually pick it. Like you said earlier, you said that it's actually much more infectious than the AIDS virus, like 50 to 100 times much more infectious because the, the virus has the ability to stay on the surface for more than a month and still be active. Unlike the AIDS virus that after a short while, um, it gets inactivated. But this virus is very, very contagious, can stay on a surface and after like a month, and then somebody can All actually right. pick it up. Hello. Now, there are some people that have no idea um, what we're talking about, especially when you say inflammation of the liver. 
There are some of our viewers that don't even know what that means. If your liver is inflamed, what does it mean? <laughs> um, they hear people traveling to India for kidney transplants, so they can't tell the difference between kidney and liver. And liver. So could you just give us that simple description so we can have an understanding? Okay, um, the, the liver actually is, is the biggest organ in the body, and um, it helps in uh, removing uh, poisonous things from the body. Like when somebody takes drug, the liver will help in breaking it down, take the good parts that will deal with the healing, and the part of drug that is not useful, which we call metabolite, the liver will help to remove it. We call it detoxification. Now, when the liver, in the process of working, you know, trying to detoxify or remove poison from the body, sometimes it passes through the kidney, somebody will urinate and it passes out. After a while, if there is a infection by the hepatitis B virus or C virus or D virus. Let's go on a quick break. We'll come back to him. Hopefully he'll be back by then. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Um, Dr. Ch Doctor, are you still there? Doctor Chuku, are you still there? Yeah, it's pharmacist, actually. Yeah, yeah sorry, I'm a, yeah, yeah, pharmacist. Yeah, pharmacist. Yes, I'm here, yeah. So okay. before the break, you were answering the question? No, I, I was, um, he was answering my question on spread. No, I think it was liver. Yes. I was asking about liver. Okay, you had yes, moved yes. on to liver. So anyway, let's... Let, asking me what inflammation meant. Right, right, right. Okay, can you... Yeah, and I'm saying in, in, in a layman's language, it just means that the liver is swollen. Mm -hmm beyond its normal size and may not perform the function of the liver very well. So we call it inflammation, swelling of the liver. Is there a possibility of vaccines now existing for this? And how, how, do, yeah, sure. how do people get it? Okay, now, uh, uh, there is vaccine available, hepatitis B vaccine, which has been available since 1982 globally, but it came into Nigeria in 1995. And it's part of um, immunization for children. The children actually have access to it within the country, at but the age? adults do not have access to it. Hello? At what age do children get that vaccine? I'm just hearing about this. I never okay, the children can get it from, uh, from birth. They take the first dose at birth, and mm -hmm. they take the second dose, the sixth, the tenth, and the fourteenth week. Okay, but children who were born beyond 1995, you know, I'm, I'm sure that. Um, uh, yeah, uh, children who were born before them, rather, they didn't have access to this vaccine, so they may need to buy it. So it's actually in the market, and it's a very affordable vaccine, hepatitis B vaccine. Okay, so it's, you can take it at any uh, age. Are... Hello? So it can be taken at any age? Exactly, for those who have not taken it, yes. But okay. before they take it, they need to be screened to make sure that they are negative. Okay, okay so go ahead, Wagi. Yeah, I, I was going to ask, is there any treatment um, for any drug you can take for hepatitis, because what, what yes. I thought is that you just um, stop uh, doing whatever you're doing and rest. Well, um, when the hepatitis becomes chronic, chronic mm -hmm. means that it's been there for more than six months and it has affected the liver. Mm -hmm. Somebody needs to say a specialist, um, the gastroenterologist and the hepatologist, they will give the person ant uh, ant antivirus that could help, okay? But prevention is better than cure. So for the hepatitis B that has uh, the vaccine, it's better somebody should screen and take the vaccine. But hepatitis C currently doesn't have a vaccine, so that one has to be treated with an antivirus, and the specialists handle that. Now, um, what are the symptoms we should look out for? Because in Nigeria, once you have a fever, they treat you for malaria. Before, before you arrive at hepatitis, in fact, it might take weeks. Mm -hmm. You'll be dead. <laughs> so <laughs> what are the symptoms? Typhoid, how, typhoid and malaria. How, how do you tell, tell your doctor you think you might have hepatitis? Or how they, is he diagnosed also when he goes to the hospital? You know, usually, you know, the, the symptoms sometimes, uh, it may just come like malaria symptoms. And that is why people miss it. You know, they keep treating malaria or typhoid. But the feeling of unwellness remains there. It is time for them to check it because sometimes it could just be that the urine is not the usual color. The, the urine is getting darker. Sometimes also you can see when it begins to advance, the yellowness of the eyes, okay? But most times this thing can go on without symptoms. We say it's asymptomatic most times. 
So the, the best thing actually is for the person to, first of all, go uh, for a test. You know, when somebody is having malaria and typhoid and the thing is not resolving, the person needs to go for a test. So these things, it's, it's not too clear, but the person may just feel weak, the person may just feel, uh, run some fever, yellowness of the eyes. Sometimes when it begins to advance, that's when you begin to see the yellowness. So it's only when they go to the hospital or, or the lab and they run tests, then they find out that the test is reactive to this virus. So the best, everybody should actually run a test to know their status for hepatitis B and also hepatitis C. Is there These are the ones that are very... Is yeah. there an age limit? Like, can you have it when you're, can you not have it when you're a certain age, maybe in like 60s, 70s? You know, can you not have it or can you just have it anytime? Yeah, but like, like I said, how, how, how does somebody pick it? If somebody takes a blood product that is um, contaminated with any of these viruses, okay, the person can pick it at any age. So there's no age limit to it because if someone is exposed to an okay. unsafe sex with a partner that has it, the person also will pick it up. So there's no age limit. So I apart from those who have had the vaccine, everybody is at risk of picking it somehow or the other from anything. So the best thing is prevention, to take the vaccine and stay protected. Right. Okay. I wanted to ask, do you know what the difference okay. between jaundice and hepatitis is? Because jaundice, you have yellow eyes. Hepatitis, you get yellow eyes. So what's the difference? And is, does jaundice affect the liver as well? Well, um, you know, sometimes it's difficult to know what the difference is until they run a test. So just looking at it physically, you may not be able to differentiate. But, you know, sometimes children, when you give birth to children, due to some reason, let's say the mother took uh, some anti-malaria late into the pregnancy, the child may have it, but it clears with time. That is different. So that is why you will need uh, a diagnosis, proper diagnosis after they've gone to the lab to actually say this is jaundice, which is just ordinary due to any other reason, and the one that is actually caused by the virus. So without a definitive test, it may be difficult for you to look at it and say, this is this, this is that. So, Mr. Chuk, let me ask a stupid question. Of course, you said the virus can stay up to a month <laughs> on surfaces. I, I read somewhere, someone started a chat that, you know, using public toilets exposes us to hepatitis. <laughs> How true is that? Well, you know, um, hepatitis A, and uh, hepatitis E, we say it could be, it's, it's fecal aura. Fecal aura means that one can actually ingest it from what one eats. So I'm wondering how the person will eat because it has to pass you know, through the mouth first from what one eats. So let's say somebody uses the toilet and the person doesn't wash his hand. You know, most of the time, most time we buy all these fruits mm. uh, on the road, uh, watermelon and the rest of them. Okay, and you know so the people that, that sell them. I, I'm wondering how- But not by sitting on a so toilet. Uh, eh? Not by sitting on a toilet, but by no, what you pick with your hands. And... I've not seen any study saying by sitting on a toilet, one can pick it. Thank but you. by okay. eating with an unwashed hand, one can pick hepatitis A. If you eat food with an unwashed hand, and maybe someone with hepatitis A has touched the food or the toilet seat and you didn't wash your hand, mm -hmm. one can pick hepatitis A or E. But for wow. B, C, and D, it's not just by going to the toilet. It has, there has to be a blood fluid or blood That's product sure. entering the person. Okay, let me ask another stupid question. Um, there okay. is this, there, there was a report I read that it's not a good thing to eat liver, cow liver, because of things like this, um, that are impurities in the liver, um, that because of, because of the work the liver does in the body, that it, and, and there's no fried rice without liver. So, mm -hmm. I mean, fried, liver is like the heart of now my fried rice fantastic liver. fried rice. So <laughs> somebody was not telling me not to eat, not to cook liver again, it's not good. Do you agree? Is that, is that, is that, an, is that advisable or do you think you can boil the impurities out, out of, the, of liver? the liver? I'm sure when you boil your liver very well, it should be safe for you to eat. I, I've not seen any studies actually. You know, everything is scientifically proven. If okay. there's a study saying that, then we can believe it. But when there's no study, then it's a hearsay. Yes. So until it's established uh, scientifically that when you boil your liver properly and take it, you pick it up. Now and it's just a hearsay. No such thing is existing scientifically, as far as I know, as at this morning. Maybe <laughs> yeah, there may be need for more studies to find out that, mm -hmm. yeah. Wait, which hepatitis is the most dangerous? Is it B, C, or, or D? Okay, now I'll answer it two ways. When, when it comes to the one that is, uh, the people get most infected by B. Like I said, two billion people worldwide get infected. Okay, but B has um, a vaccine that can prevent it. Okay. But hepatitis C 
Okay, that one is actually very, very dangerous because there is no vaccine for it. Okay, mm -hmm. if you look at both of them, both of them are very important public health issues. But C is actually more dangerous than, than B. Both of them can lead to um, chronic liver diseases. But the number of people that come down with B is much more than those that come down with C. Like okay. I say, worldwide, the number for hepatitis C stands at 350 million, but for the hepatitis B, 2 billion, according to the uh, uh, WHO. Right. So Thank you see, so looking at it from both angles. Right. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. We appreciate All your right. thoughts on this issue of hepatitis. We've been speaking with the pharmacist and head Vaccine Sales and Strategy, Emzo Vaccines, Chuku Ekwe. That's all we can take on the show today. Have a fabulous day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. You can watch Your View on TVC every Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Nigerian time on DSTV Channel 418, Go TV Channel 27 and Channel 47, Star Times Channel 121 and Channel 307. Play TV, channel 801 and channel 190, UHF 49, Sky channel 515 for UK viewers. Watch live on Facebook at TVC Connect and on our website, tvcentertainment.tv forward slash livestream.